Hello everyone, this is Fandir Kalki with another tutorial. We already done the FBA with um, ANSYS and now we're going to practice the FBA using Katia. So I highly recommend if in case you didn't watch the FBA using ANSYS and also the FBA lecture, go back and uh, look at those videos and then come back to the Katia. Just see what's the difference between the different softwares, but also this one is really useful for your uh, project and assignments if in case you want to do the modeling and also uh, analysis using the Katia in the same place. So for today, we will start by creating a new part. And what you need to do here, we need to click on File, click on New, and uh, we want to create a new part. So I need to click Part and click OK. So let's start by the XY plane. And what I will do, I will then create on a sketch to create a new sketch. And let me start by creating a rectangle. So let me give the dimension to this one. And let's say this length and the width of that I'm looking for. So I'm going to put 200 for the lens, 400 millimeter and 50 millimeter for the height or for the bits of it let's add a circle in the middle to see uh, the changes so in order to exactly get in the middle so i'm going to use these basically guidance to bring it to the middle and let me draw a circle here and let's give the uh, diameter of 25. so we have a rectangle and also we have a circle in between which has um a diameter of 25 and is exactly in its center. So once we draw it, what I need to do, I need to come and exit out of the sketch and let's pad it or extrude it. So what I will do, I will just first uh, highlight the sketch and then I click on pad and let's extrude or pad it for five mil and I will click OK. So you see, this is our model. And let's also change the name of it. I'm going to click on right click on the part and I'm going to go to properties and change the product name to plate, for instance. And let's click OK. You will see the name of it is changed as plate. And let's also save the file as well. So I highly recommend to go and then uh, create a folder because we want to make sure actually we have a folder for our analysis and I'm going to call it the plate analysis. I'm going to save the plate part in here. So we already done our uh, basically creating the geometry. So you can uh, create any geometry you want, but this is just for the practice for a really simple uh, geometry. What is really important before I go to the next stage in order to analyze the part, I have to apply the materials. And if I don't do that, once I open the analysis, you will get the error that you have to specify the material. So before I go there, I'm going to add the material because the basic the material, each material has a different property, different breaking points. It's really important for the software to know how the material needs to behave under different conditions. So what I need to do while I'm choosing the basic, the main part, which is in this case plate, I will go and click on this one, which is apply material. So in here, I will click on apply material and you have the right range of material. You have uh, by default, I think it looks like that. And usually I will go to look at it as a list because that would be easier for me. So let's go to the metal and let's look for the steel. And I'm gonna pick up the steel, click on apply and click on okay. And you can see that the material become still in here. So now I already have a material. So what I will do, I will go to the start and you will see for instance, for mechanical design, you would be able to part design. So that's what where we can do in terms of the designing. But now I'm going to go to the analysis and simulation because we want to do a analysis and I'm going to go to the generative structure analysis. So again, you go to a start, click analysis and simulation and you click on generative structure analysis. And the study we want to do is a static analysis. And I'll click OK. If I didn't have the material, you will get the error in this stage, but because I already um, defined the material, so it would be really a straightforward one. We can go ahead. So if you remember, we uh, discussed about it for any fundamental analysis, analysis, you already you need to have a geometry, which, you, which this is what I have. And you need to apply material, then you need to specify what mesh elements you want to use and the mesh sizes. Basically, this is the discretization method. 
So you will see the green um, element in here that shows the mesh. If I double click on this one, you will see that basically shows the Tetra hydral mesh and by default they use the 12.5 millimeter. If you want to change the mesh size, what you can do, you can just type whatever mesh size you are looking for because the, um, the pad or the extrude length was 5 mil. I'm going to go with a 5 mil in here and I'm going to click OK. And you can see the size of that become smaller. If in case you want to visualize it, you can go to nodes and elements, click on a plus, and you can see you have your tetrahedral mesh here. So if I right click on the nodes and elements, if I click on a mesh visualization, what it does, it goes through to discretize my uh, model. I click OK, and you can see I see the mesh representation um, and discretization method that I've done on the plate. Basically, break it down to the smaller pieces. But because I want to create a boundary condition and forces, having the mesh elements make it uh, hard to just uh, specify the face, it would be easier to have the mesh if in case you want to specifically point the force on the mesh. But in order to... Uh, prevent any problem what I will do I will right click on the mesh and deactivate it right now because I don't need to see the mesh so what I have to do now I have to then create the boundary conditions any fixtures any relation between the different parts so in order to see that what I need to do I need to go here onto the uh, right hand side let me drag this out and I'm gonna bring this one out which is what I'm looking for so here is basically the restraints and or the boundary condition that I want to create. And I will I want to click on this one, the first, which is clamp. And I'm gonna clamp one side of the parts. Let's say I'm gonna clamp basically, let's say the uh, the other part of it, the other side of that. And I'm gonna clamp here and I'm gonna click OK. So what it does is just fix the X, Y, and Z for translations as well as rotation, X translation, Y translation, and Z translation as well as the uh, rotation on all of those. So there should be any, any degree of freedom over there. Now what I will do, I want to add the force onto the other side. So let me drag this one out. Let me leave it there. And you can see here you have access to the pressures, you have access to the distributed forces, momentum, uh, bearing load, and so on. So what I'm going to add, I'm going to add the distributed force. So let me rotate the model again. And on the other side, what I want to do, I want to basically add a force. So by default, what you will see is a zero Newton. And also the normalized, the overall is a zero. Depends on what uh, or how you design it. Because I have the X direction from the left to the right. I'm going to go for the X direction because I'm going to pull the model and I'm going to put 1000 Newtons. And let me specify the face I want to add it. And you can see this is how the forces looks like. And I will click OK. So what you will see here, basically, you will see that we have a plate that is one side of it is fixed or clamp. And the other part is the force that are going to pull the model. So again, we already have a geometry. We've done the mesh, we updated the mesh elements, we added the boundary condition, which was the clamp that we added, and also we added the forces. So we'll continue if in case we want to add any other boundary condition or forces, but in this case, it's fine. So what I need to do, I need to basically uh, select the solver and let the solver to do that. In order to do it, let me uh, drag this out to just get uh, the calculated option, and it is this one. So let me bring it out for you to see it better. What I will do, I will click on Compute. And you will see whether you want to do only mesh or also you want to do analysis. I'm going to do both of them together. I want to remesh it again and also do analysis. So I will do click OK. We'll just go and check my CPU power, how much memory do I have, and which basically represents how long does it take for me to do it. doesn't have any other information. So what I will do, I just click Yes. I'll let the software to go through and basically analyze it. Depends on how um, complex is your geometry and your mesh criteria of force as a boundary condition might take longer. In this case, you're already done. And I know that because basically you see you have your result here. So what I will do, again, I drag this one out from the right hand side. Let me bring this one out as well. So first, the first one basically shows any deformation that I have here. The second one basically shows the bone misses a stress. 
So you can see the one misses a stress here, for instance. And also what you will be able to do, you will be able to see the amount of the stress here. And let's click on this one, which basically you can see here, for instance, the first one is a displacement. Displacement is 0 0.04 is basically, it's negligible, is really uh, low dis uh, displacement. Let me go with the principal stress. You will see the stress here. And also at the end, I have basically the uh, precise mirror that shows the the, uh, the the model with the um, the mesh on top of that. So if I click on any of these, you can see all the graphs they are visible here. So let's go with the one misses for instance one more time. Let me double click on it. On the one misses, so what you will see here that basically let me bring it from here as well. It's the same things if you want to bring the one misses. So if you double click on that you can have the text which basically shows the exact value of the every single nodes and elements i can go with a symbolic which you can see or i can go with a discontinuous iso or can go with the average iso which shows the boundaries of the every area that has a different kind of inner stress and uh, the same thing so for instance if i go with a deform mesh and you can see that for instance the deform mesh shows that uh, the the deformation here so if i rotate the model you can see the deformation better the changes of the shape you can see this uh, the circle looks like an ellipse here that we have the deformation of well, but the deformation was negligible negligible was the 0 0.04 if you want to animate the video let's say for instance i'm gonna go and use this one if you want to animate it there are two ways that you can do that you can either uh, click on here which basically shows animate or I can go to the tools and basically click animate. If I click on animate, you will see the animation here. I can control the speed of that or increase the speed of it. And it's the same thing. So even if I go, let's say for this one, if I click on animate, it's basically, uh, it's the same things that I have there. So let me go for instance for displacement. And let me go to the animate again one more time so you can see the animation for the displacement. The other thing I want to say, so these values, if I double click on that, you can see I can change the number of colors. So let me increase it to 15, for instance. If I click apply, you can see now the range, the range of colors increase. If I go to more, you can basically control the style of it. Right now it's automatic. I can change it to the scientific become a scientific way of representation. I can go with the decimals and you can see it's a decimal way of representation or can go with the automatic. Also, you can change the number of the significant digits. Let's increase it to five, for instance. You can see now you will have the five decimals afterwards. Uh, and that's the same thing. Even if I go with the, for instance, um, the principal stress, that's the same thing. If I double click here, I can go and change the number of colors. I can go and then control the scientific and change it to decimal, for instance. And you can see the numbers uh, general or the scientific. So once you finish, once uh, you've done your analysis, everything is fine. You want to get a report. You can either go to the tools, click on generate report, or what you can do, you can basically drag this one out and this one is a report. And click on OK. And what you will see, that's basically, you will see that report has been generated. It talks about the mesh, how many nodes, how many elements did you have, and the quality of the elements, the material that we used, the young modulus, and density, and so on, the boundary condition that we created, the clamp that we had, basically, and the loads that we used, we had only one load, and this is the load we have and so on. So that will be really useful if in case you want to use this information in the report. And also you can see that basically shows the deformation here. It shows the bone misses uh, in here and different figures. So let me go back and minimize this one. And also in here, for instance, you can go to the tools, you can click on image and you can click on capture. What the capture does is basically take a picture a screen of the model. So if in case you want to bring it your report and can click on save and you have different formats of the uh, image that you can use and also it's the same thing for instance if you want you can go to the tools image and record a video for instance i can click on the play 
and basically what do I do? For instance, if I go, you can see each of them shows that basically the different values of the uh, the stress principle here. It also shows that even if I go with the, for instance, play, now we start record my screen basically. And that's also a really useful tool. So everything is embedded in the uh, Katia. So you don't need, for instance, to just use the screen recorder. And that was it for today. It was quite a simple, um, of course, uh, FVA on the Katia, just to give you an idea about how the FVA works in the Katia. But again, depends on your geometry, depends on your boundary condition, and forces it become much more complex. But of course, if you learn this one, it will help you a lot once you go and use the software of, uh, with your uh, models, which is different with this one. Thank you so much. Uh, this is Esfandir Kolgi, and see you next time.